Welcome to Let's Make a Game, the channel where we are making a computer role-playing game using the free program Twine and the Sugarcube format for Twine. We've been talking about character creation and character attributes. Uh, we've gone through randomly generating those attributes and giving bonuses and penalties based on the race that the player chooses. So, for example, if we have a strength stat, uh, if the player chooses to be a dwarf, they might get a bonus to that strength stat, but then they might get a bonus, uh, a penalty to charisma, for example, whereas a human might have uh, lower strength but higher charisma compared to a dwarf. And that's one way to distinguish uh, races and make, make the choice of race a meaningful choice. We then moved on to allowing the player to choose their own attributes, and that creates a problem. Uh, let's say that we give dwarves a bonus to strength and a penalty to charisma compared to humans. And let's say that I choose a dwarf and I want a charisma of 12 and I know that dwarves get a minus four penalty to charisma. Well, all I'm going to do is just give them 16 charisma and then they'll get the penalty. And similarly, if I want a strength of 15, and I know that they get a plus 4 bonus to strength, well, I'll just give them 11 strength, and then the bonus will take it up to what I want. So if that's your method of distinguishing races, you can end up not actually distinguishing them uh, in practical terms. Um, so there are um, other things you could do. You can um, give the different races different powers, that aren't related to attributes. So, for example, you could say that dwarves can see in the dark and elves have particular magic spells that no one else can do, and perhaps humans have some sort of uh, choice of skills that the other um, races don't get access to. But what I'm going to show you today is a way of distinguishing races uh, in terms of attributes uh, while still allowing the player to... Um, choose their own attributes. And that is very simply that you make the range of possible attributes different for different races. So um, I've got the starting screen here where we have a dwarf, elf, and a human. And let's say I choose a dwarf. And if you watch the previous video, you'll uh, recognize this setup where um, I can increase or decrease the attributes, but the difference is that the ranges are different. For example, charisma, I can take the charisma all the way down to one, but constitution, I can only take it down to five. And similarly, um, dexterity, let's say I want a really high dexterity, that can only go as high as 15, but strength, I can take that as high as 20. Whereas if I choose a human, we can see on the left-hand side I have a big picture of the dwarf and then the smaller pictures of the elf and the human to indicate that I've chosen a dwarf, to remind me as a player that I've chosen a dwarf. But I can click on the human here, and then we find that the range is between 15 and 5 for everything. Um, and so that is the, that is a way of distinguishing um, the different races. Now, if you are going to choose this way of doing it, I would make sure that you make the ranges quite different. Don't just move them sort of a couple of a couple of points difference. Because if you only move them a couple of points difference, you might find that for a given combination of attributes, you can choose that for any race. And so race doesn't, it isn't really a choice, it's just a cosmetic difference, which might be fine, but if you want the races to actually be different, um, you probably want the player to think, well, if I want this particular combination, I really need to have one of these races, or at least one of these two races, perhaps, out of, you know, if you've got more than three, you might say, well, there's two out of ten that can, that can have this particular combination that I want. Um, the other thing that I've changed, and I'm going to show you this in this video, is that I've added a new attribute called 
uh, or the Prince S-I-Z, that's meant to stand for size. Um, and that's not a very common attribute. Strength, intelligence, dexterity, constitution, charisma, you find that in lots and lots of role-playing games, both um, tabletop and uh, uh, computer role-playing games. But size is pretty unusual. Um, I quite like it because um, you can do a lot of mechanical things with it that I find interesting. Um, and it's unusual in that uh, a high size is not necessarily better. High strength is always better than low strength. High intelligence is always better than low intelligence and so on. Um, but size size is sort of different. It, it can be used to give advantages and disadvantages to the character, whether you have a high size or a low size, um, which I find interesting. And I'll get into the details of, um, of sort of how you can use size in future videos, but I just wanted to add it in there to, um, to preempt that. And because of that fact, because a higher size is not necessarily better, it doesn't count towards the points that you're distributing. So um, if I add to my constitution, well, we notice that right now it's saying you may continue or further adjust your character's attributes. And what that means is I've I've distributed exactly the amount of points. If we added these first five attributes up, we get exactly 50, which is the amount that the program um, gives each player to distribute. Um, so if I increase charisma, it now says, well, you've got to take one point from your character's attributes. So I've added a point there. I've got to take another point from somewhere else. And similarly, if I um, take away that intelligence, well, now I have to add one to, say, dexterity or something to get it back to the 50. But that doesn't happen when I alter the size. The size just stays as it is. So um, when I show you the code, I'll also show you how you can exempt size from the normal way that the attributes work. Or hey, um, So that's basically how it works, or that's that's what it looks like from the player's point of view. We just um, choose a race. You can freely sort of change your mind, and you uh, change the attributes as you wish until you get a character that you're reasonably happy with, and that that uses up uh, fifty uh, exactly fifty points here. Um, if we add this up, we can see that. That's 19, uh, 19 and 12 is 31, 31 and 6 is 37, and then 13 is 50, so that's that's correct. And then we just press continue, but of course, I haven't yet programmed what you continue to. Um, but that's what you, um, that's what you do. Let's um, now look at how the code works. So we'll get into... Um, get into Twine here. I have only really made a few changes from the previous video, so there's certain things I'm not going to get into in detail. Um, and and if you if you haven't seen the previous video and you want to know how those things work, um, you're probably better off uh, watching the previous video. But so you'll notice that I've added back. A page called Story Caption. Story Caption is a special, and, and as long as it's spelt exactly like like that, with the capital letters and with no space in between it. If you have a page called Story Caption, it you don't need to direct the program to ever go to it. The computer knows that that is a sort of special uh, title for a page, and that it is to do whatever's in the um, whatever's in story caption in the sidebar. So if you remember um, looking at the program, we had the pictures of the of the different races in the sidebars. This is this is the code that does that. Um, so let's look at that first. The choosing the race is basically as it was um, in the previous video. The player clicks on a picture. And that sets a value to the variable r, which is the which is your race. Um, this whole thing is uh, set to execute if r, meaning if r has a um, has a value has been assigned a value. And what it does is it's all within div align equal center. Div align uh, equal center just means uh, start a paragraph, and this paragraph is 
centred uh, horizontally. It's in the middle of the page. Rather than starting from the left of the page, it, it's set up so that it's, so that it's in the centre. And then as the comments uh, spell out, we print a large picture showing the current choice of race, and then we print small pictures giving the option to change race. The large picture is simply uh, a format that we've seen before, which is square bracket IMG, square bracket picks, slash a number, dot PNG, unsquare bracket, unsquare bracket. And um, picks slash, say, one, Dot png we know that if we look in um, where the game is to be found we have picks as one of the um, folders and then we have 1.png 2.png and 3.png which are a picture of a dwarf an elf and a human respectively this monster picture isn't used in this particular page and then we have small one small two and small three which are just the same pictures but um, but shrunk down so getting back to this, we know that uh, it's saying image and the location of the image is pix and then within pix slash a number dot png. So if we chose dwarf, for example, it'd be one dot png. Then we print all of the small pictures, which uh, are also links. The, the big picture isn't a link because We've already chosen that 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 race or the race that corresponds to that picture, so we don't need to give the player any options. But if we've if we've chosen a dwarf, we need to make the pictures of the human and the pictures of the elf a link to to choose to be a human. So it's a for loop, which goes from one to R n, which is uh, the number of races, which in this case is three. In a real game, would probably be somewhat higher. And then if Z, and this is the only sort of new concept or uh, so far, I'll zoom in so you can see what I've done here. It says if Z exclamation mark equals dollars R. What that, what that exclamation mark equals means is does not equal. If Z does not equal R, then print, print this. And this is somewhat similar to um, the code that we had above. It starts with square bracket IMG, square bracket picks slash small, a number dot PNG, unsquare bracket. Then it has square bracket initialize unsquare bracket. That tells the computer that it's a link that takes the player to the initialize page, to the page that is named initialize. And then square bracket R2 and then a number. So what that, um, let's say we, uh, let's say Z is two, uh, it'll be print image picks slash small two dot PNG initialize R to two, meaning set the player's choice of race to, to two because they've clicked the relevant picture. And then we just have the end of the for loop, the end of the div. You have to do that for div. Um, and the end of the if. And that will take us to initialize. This is where the, um, the sort of coding really gets going. Uh, so we have an equals six, and at is a, an array. These are, these are the same as they were in the previous video, except that I've added size and increased an by one. We have ba equals 50. That is the uh, number of points that the player has to distribute. And as I've said, size points sort of don't count towards this. Then we have AV, which is an array giving the current value of each attribute. Then we have this. We have MA and MI. MA and MI are arrays that give the MA stands for maximum and MI stands for minimum. Uh, MA is uh, the maximum number that given a given race can have for a given attribute and mi is the the equivalent the minimum so um, if we look at this particular one for example we can see set ma1 to this array so we know that it's a two-dimensional array one dimension is is right which race and one dimension is which attribute 
we start with the text dwarf. That isn't actually used. That's that's just to remind um, the programmer what each one is. And then we have 2015, 15, 20, 10, 8. And that's telling the computer that a dwarf can't have a strength of more than 20, an intelligence of more than 15, a dexterity of more than 15, a constitution of more than 20, a charisma of more than 10, or a size of more than 8. And then we have equivalence uh, data for the other two races. And then we have MI, which is very similar, is laid out the same, except that it's the minimums, of course. So a dwarf um, has a minimum strength of five, um, minimum intelligence of three, minimum dexterity of three, five is constitution, minimum charisma of one, minimum size of three. Uh, and then the same things for elves. We can see that humans are the sort of the middling race, that they, for everything, they have between five and 15, except for size, where they have between 10 and 15. Um, now, we have another for loop. What this is doing is setting the starting values for um, the player's attributes. And there's a new operation here, which is math.round. It does have to be capitalized. So capital M A T H dot R O U N D. Um, what that is, is it rounds a number. So for example, if I were to, let's say, let's say this, if I had set Z equals math round 3.6, that would just set Z to four. Right, so that can be quite useful when you're doing averages, and, but you want a whole number. Um, if it's 0.5, by the way, it will round up rather than down. All right, so math round, or what is it rounding? Well, it's rounding this plus this over 2, so the average of these two values. And what are these two values? Well, they are the relevant entry in MA and MI. So... Um, M, A, R, Z, uh, R being the race, Z being the attribute that we're dealing with at the time, uh, and then, of course, the same for M, I. So if it was, let's say we were looking at uh, intelligence for an elf, we would say, let's say elves have a minimum, intelligence is the third one along, so slot two, uh, elves have a minimum intelligence of one, and a maximum intelligence of 20. Uh, 20 plus 1 is 21. When we divide that by 2, we get 10.5. So um, it would round that to 11. So it would set um, it would set the uh, the old starting intelligence to 11. Or sorry, it, would, it sets Y to be 11. Then it sets A B Z to be Y. Then, if the name of the attribute that we're talking about does not equal, there's that does not equal again, if the name of the attribute we're talking about does not equal SIZ, in other words, if we're not talking about size, set BA equals BA minus Y. Now, you remember that BA is the number of points we have to distribute, and we also note that size doesn't, size doesn't count. So that's why we've got that if it doesn't equal size. Um, reduce the balance because size doesn't count towards the um, towards the number of points that, that we've used. And then when you've done that for every attribute, go to adjust attributes. This is the, uh, the page where the player gets to um, gets to choose what you know how they want to change the, the setup. Now as I said, we have div align equals center. we have a table. I'm not going to go through how tables work in this video in detail because I did that in the previous video, but just so that you know, uh, a table is a sort of invisible grid on the uh, on the screen, or by default it's invisible. You can also choose to make the lines of the grid visible, but by default it's invisible, uh, and it's useful for when you want to make sure that a particular text is on top of other text because different fonts, uh, different typefaces have different widths for different um, uh, for different letters, and often the, the the relationship between those widths is is 
not the same from one typeface to the other. So if you want to make sure that a particular text is exactly over another text or next to another text, which you often will do when you're setting out information like um, like like attributes, then a table is what you need. TR means start a, a new row in the table, and TD means start a new cell in the table, a new square in the table or rectangle order. Um, so this is uh, the um, code that might give us the option to decrease the attribute. It's saying if the current value of the relevant attribute is higher than the relevant minimum, the minimum that's relevant for that attribute and that race, um, then do this. And this is different depending on whether we're talking about size or something else. If it's size, print a link, uh, the text of which is two less than characters. Um, if I was doing this in, in like for a real game, I would not just have characters, I'd use a, a picture of an arrow, but you know, this is just for a demo, it's good enough to have this, uh, this text. And then it sends us to adjust attributes, which means it sends us to the, the page that we're on. But the difference is that AVZ minus minus, meaning reduce the value of AVZ by one. Um, so if we're talking about size, we can click on this to reduce size by one. And if we're not talking about size, we can click on this to reduce size by one, but also to increase BA. Plus plus means uh, add one to the relevant attribute. Um, so it's sort of the opposite of minus minus. And that makes sense because if we, let's say we have uh, intelligence of nine and we lower it down to eight, well, that gives us one more point to distribute somewhere. And to um, reflect that, we should increase BA by one. Um, then we just print the name of the attribute, a colon, and the value of the attribute. So something like uh, CHA colon 17 or something, if that was the charisma of the character. This code is sort of the opposite of the, of the code that we just looked at above. This is giving us the option to uh, increase the attribute. So if the value of the relevant attribute is less than the relevant maximum, the relevant entry in the MA um, uh, two-dimensional array, then do one of these things. If, we're, if the attribute, if the name of the attribute we're talking about is size, then print these two characters, send, us to adjust, send the player to adjust attributes if they click it, and if they click it, increase AVZ. That's for size. If it's anything else, do all of that, but also decrease the value of BA. So for example, if we had charisma of 11 and then we added one to make it 12, well, that's one less point that we have to distribute. So that's why BA needs to be changed around. And then we just close off the table in the center. And this is the same as before. This just gives us a message um, depending on what BA is. So it will either say you have one point to distribute, you have seven points, whatever it may be to distribute, you must take one point from your character's attributes. You must take such and such points from your character's attributes. The only reason for having a special category for if it equals one or minus one is um, so because it says point instead of points. Um, I could have, for example, done point slash s or point bracket s, but I just thought this was a little bit more um, natural sounding to have a separate category. Um, And the only, so we get a message that tells us sort of how we're going in terms of points. Um, if none of these other things apply, which will happen if BA is exactly equal to zero, it says you may continue or further adjust your character's attributes. Uh, BR, BR being just line breaks. And then we'll have, in that particular case, we'll have a link to, um, to the page finished, um, which will display the text continue. Um, because if the points are zero, then we have the option, if we've distributed exactly the right amount of points, then we have the option of, of continuing. Otherwise, we have to either increase or decrease um, our character's attributes. So that is, that is how you do that. 
Um, as I say, it's not the only way to have uh, mechanical distinctions between different races, um, but it's a, it's a way to do it. Um, and um, it means that you don't have to refer to the character's race anywhere else in the game, and that in turn means that you can add new races without having to program extra stuff in the in the main game. So if I wanted to have halflings or something, all I would have to do is create two pictures. Uh, I'd have to change Rn um, so that it was now four instead of instead of three. I'd have to add um, pictures, and then I'd have to have um, a new row which gave the maximums and minimums for it. But after that, it would be, um, I wouldn't need to do anything in the main body of the game that related to the existence of that new race. Um, and so that's the, that's the advantage of using this, uh, of using this method. Um, you know, it's one method among many and which one's appropriate for your game um, depends on what your game is. So I hope that was of interest to some of you. Um, coming up, of course, I'm going to move on from character creation and look at uh, the, the sort of the main game, you know, having the character actually interact with um, stuff in the game and, and, and what these attributes, how you can use these attributes to um, affect results in the game. So I hope that you will tune in for that. <laughs>